Trump issued visa to Russian lawyer days before Trump meeting. The Russian attorney whose campaign season meeting with Donald Trump Jr. has caused headaches for the White House was clear to enter the U.S. at the time of the visit by the Obama State Department, officials confirmed to Fox News late Thursday. A brief timeline released overnight helps to resolve questions over how Natalia Veselnitskaya even had legal permission to be in the U.S. and it also shows multiple Obama agencies were involved on multiple occasions in granting access to the lawyer after she was initially denied a visa. According to the timeline released by the Department of Homeland Security, the Obama Justice and Homeland Security Departments granted her a special type of parole to be in the U.S. from September 2015 through February 2016 to work on a court case in New York. After that expired, according to DHS, the State Department issued her a B-1-B-2 non-immigrant visa in June 2016, according to DHS, just in time for her meeting with Trump Jr., Trump's son-in-law Jared Kushner and then-campaign chairman Paul Manafort. That newly revealed meeting has revived congressional scrutiny of the campaign's alleged coordination with Russia, since an intermediary told Trump Jr. the lawyer could have dirt on Hillary Clinton as part of the Russian government's bid to help his dad. While Trump Jr. has since said, in hindsight, he would have done things differently, his father on Thursday took a more defiant tone and seemed to blame the Obama administration for letting the lawyer into the country. Her unusual entry into the U.S. has sparked a furious round of finger-pointing among federal agencies, and the buck appears to stop at the State Department, with assistance from both Dodge and DHS. But the timeline released overnight at least clarifies how she had approval to be in the U.S., if not why. Ms. Veselnitskaya was subsequently paroled into the U.S. several times between 2015 and 2016, ending in February 2016. In June 2016, she was issued a B-1-B-2 slash non-immigrant visa by the U.S. Department of State, a DHS spokesperson told Fox News Thursday night. DHS officials also said that it was their agency in concurrence with the U.S. Attorney's Office of Southern District of New York which paroled Veselnitskaya into the U.S. Fox News confirmed through court documents that Veselnitskaya initially applied for a visa to enter the United States, but it was denied. Preet Bharara was the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York at the time the parole was granted. Veselnitskaya was issued a significant public benefit parole document on September 25, 2015, according to DHS, which expired on January 7, 2016. Veselnitskaya requested an extension to continue her work on the case, but the Southern District of New York's Attorney's Office denied her request. She was not granted a second parole by our office, SDNY spokesman James Margolin told Fox News in an email. Her case-related immigration parole ended early in 2016, and it was not renewed by us. The U.S. Attorney's Office told Fox News on Thursday that Veselnitskaya was indeed granted initial parole by their office, but did not know who, specifically, issued the piece of paper. Somebody said that her visa or passport to come into the country was approved by Attorney General Lynch, now maybe that's wrong, I just heard that a little while ago. That? She was here because of Lynch, Trump said at a joint press conference with French President Emmanuel Macron on Thursday in Paris. Prior to DHS pointing fingers at the Department of State, a state spokesperson told Fox News that they had no further information to provide. The State Department told Fox News Wednesday that the department is prohibited by the Immigration and Nationality Act from discussing individual visa cases and told Fox News that all visa applications are adjudicated on a case-by-case -case basis. The State Department did not respond to Fox News' request to confirm that they issued Veselnitskaya b one b 2 non-immigrant visa, or comment on Veselnitskaya's current immigration status. It is unclear as to why Veselnitskaya was denied a visa initially by the Obama State Department, and then granted one in later months. Acting Chief of Media Relations for U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services Jillian Christensen told Fox News on Thursday that a range of DHS agencies would typically deal with parole requests, but ICE was not involved in this particular case. The type of parole Veselnitskaya was granted is given sparingly and in extraordinary circumstances, 
including urgent humanitarian reasons, such as medical or family emergency. Broadly speaking, Christensen told Fox News that parole may be requested for a person who believes his or her presence in the United States will be a significant public benefit, and cited participation in a civil court case as an example. Parole allows an individual to enter the United States and remain for a temporary period corresponding to the reason parole was approved, Christensen told Fox News. Parole is not generally authorized for more than one year. Vazel Nitskaya was working as an attorney for a Cyprus-based real estate holdings company called Brevson, run by Denis Katsev, son of Petra Katsev, one of Russian President Vladimir Putin's closest advisors, and was given unlimited resources by the Kremlin-connected group to run a campaign to get the Magnitsky Act repealed, Fox News reported Wednesday. The Magnitsky Act enacts sanctions on certain Russian officials as a punishment for human rights violations. Reba McIntyre's powerful new song will destroy every single Trump hater in America. Reba McIntyre is one of the best country singers known to the music industry. She just released a new song which sends a message to liberals everywhere. Cause we're still worth saving, we can't go on like this and live like this, we can't love like this, we gotta give this world back to God, Reba sang in her new song called Back to God. This is an incredibly powerful message that needs to be heard everywhere, now more than ever. We have so much hate in the country because of the last election. Americans are burning flags, dishonoring our military and police officers, rioting in the streets, and wishing death on our newly elected president. Clearly, we do need to get this country back to God. But, liberals today are too cool to believe in God. They don't want to conform to one belief. And yet, most liberals do believe the same thing, that God does not exist and that there is nothing after death. That's fine, no one is going to force you to be religious. But, why discriminate against Christians? And, why deny that there are any good lessons to be learned from faith? The liberals shout out facts of the universe, as if we don't know them, and ask us to explain the way the Bible fits into it. Well, the Bible was written thousands of years ago by people who didn't understand the universe half as well as we do today, so they are going to be things in the Bible that don't make a lot of sense. There are also a lot of things in the Bible that make more sense than any philosophy I've heard a liberal argue. The Bible advocates for peace, love, and forgiveness. It puts an emphasis on life, family, and community, something our divided nation desperately needs. Thankfully. Donald Trump is going to be bringing God back into this country. He made it okay to say Merry Christmas again. He's put the Lord back in our Pledge of Allegiance. This is fitting. After all, this country was built on the foundation of faith. And we need to go back to our roots. This new respect for faith won't change the beliefs of the liberals, and that's okay, because it will strengthen the core values of this country. I believe that, in their hearts are lost liberals raking for the kind of values my faith gives me. When our faith erodes, these values erode, and that spells disaster for the country. As Reba says, you gotta get down on your knees, believe, fold your hands and beg and plead, you gotta keep on praying. With a little more faith, and a little more respect for faith, the turmoil and division in this country will die down. This country will unite under our president. What do you think about Reba's song and how it pertains to America right now? Please share the story on Facebook and tell us because we want to hear your voice. Massive news Loretta Lynch connected directly to Russian spy scandal. The media decided to take the story of Trump Jr. talking to a Russian lawyer and blow the story up to massive proportions. It turns out that Junior was not the only one talking to the lawyer, where's the outrage? The lawyer's visa was denied, and could not get into our country. Suddenly, Loretta Lynch, who was the attorney general at the time, granted Natalia special immigration parole so she could enter the country, per the Hill. There's more than meets the eye to this story. The left immediately goes into full-blown outrage mood, and this is the smoking gun to the Trump-Russia story, to them. Vazelnitskaya only spoke about the U.S. policy on adopting Russian children. 
the conversation lasted 20 minutes, and was a waste of time for everyone involved. Beyond that meeting is where things get interesting. The foreign attorney was spending the rest of her time lobbying for campaigns for the left. Loretta Lynch giving her special rights to get into the country, even after being denied, is a big red flag. Based on this evidence, and the fact that nothing came from the meeting, the whole thing was probably set up by the Democrats. They wanted to take advantage of the young and politically inexperienced Trump Jr. Natalia couldn't come up with anything else, so she resorted to talking about adoption issues. After the meeting was over, and Trump left feeling unsatisfied, the left put their plan in motion. Now, they can say that Jr. met with a Russian SPY, it sounds so scary, and that President Trump must be impeached due to his son's behavior. The truth is, despite the meeting, Jr. did nothing wrong. If you want to look for the real criminals, take a peek at Loretta Lynch and company when you let people into your country illegally, for the purposes of trying to set someone up, particularly the son of the POTUS, there are going to be significant problems. We want to see Lynch's correspondence with the Russian lawyer. We would bet the information there would be much more damning than anything found in Trump Jr.'s emails. We're all getting so tired of listening to the left yam about the Russians, when deems are the ones who are working hand in hand with Russia to sabotage the Republicans in any way possible. Elizabeth Warren panics Kid Rock's possible run for Michigan Senate not a joke. Senator Elizabeth Warren warned Democrats through a fundraising email to seriously take the possibility of musician Kid Rock to run the Michigan Senate. According to the Boston Herald, she said that she knew that a lot of people would consider this as a joke but this should be strongly considered, comparing it to the moment when Donald J. Trump announced his campaign for the presidential election in the U.S. And sure, maybe this is just a marketing gimmick for a new album or tour, but we all thought Donald Trump was just promoting his reality show, too, she added. The email of the senator comes after the musician tweeted a link to a new campaign website, KidRockForsenate.com, on Wednesday. Late in another post on his website Thursday, the 46-year-old Michigan native said his announcement was anything but a joke and fired at the media as well as the incumbent Michigan Senator Debbie Stabenow, no, who was wrong about his potential candidacy. The Herald reported. That Warren's email linked to a fundraising website where the revenues are for Warren's own re election effort and Stabenow's 2018 campaign. Rock has still not submitted a candidacy statement to the Federal Election Commission. However, the singer revealed on Facebook that his idea is to release new music during the campaign, very similar to how politicians in campaigns release books. Stabenow posted a response to the announcement of the singer on Wednesday on her personal Twitter account. She wrote that they both share a passion for music but she will admit that he is better at playing guitar than her, but that she will keep doing what she does best which is fighting for Michigan. In his Facebook post on Thursday, Kidrock responded Stabenow's post by using her own language. Senator Stabenow and I do share a love of music, although probably not the same kind. He also wrote, I concede she is better at playing politics than I am so I'll keep doing what I do best, which is being a voice for tax-paying, hard-working Americans and letting politicians like her know that we the people are sick and tired of their bullshit. Jaylena risked his entire career by exposing President Trump. We all know what is going on between the liberals and the president. The drama is unstoppable because the liberals are doing anything possible to take him and his family down. But, guess who took a step forward in order to defend the president? Jay Leno. Mr. Leno came out of shadows, risked his entire career and commented something that could be a lesson for the liberals. Vi we the proud patriots, Jay Leno is tired of the liberal nonsense. He can't stand the anti-Trump resistance, and let's be honest. Liberals have already crossed the red line. Leno says that the Trump bashing should be brought to an end. He said that if he was still a late night host, liberals won't have that many opportunities to mock the president. In a recent interview, Jay Leno said that if he were still a late night host, there would be less Trump bashing. I enjoy bringing people together. If, mocking the president, 
is a constant thing on a nightly basis, eventually you're all doing the same joke, Leno said. According to the former late night hosts, comedians are recycling the same joke over and over again. We can't do anything but agree with him. Most hosts are just trying to gain more popularity. They don't know that criticizing the president isn't the right way to do things. Liberal reporters are only interested in generating propaganda. The fun times are gone, and comedians consider themselves experts in politics. We know that politicians are comedians' favorite topic, but things have gone too far this time. President Trump is treated like no other president before. His family doesn't deserve such treatments, and we can only hope that liberals learn their lesson. President Donald Trump is doing everything he can to save this country, and help people who live in it. He made some great campaign promises, and we can see him working on it. Unfortunately, liberals will never approve his plans. President Trump is the best president America has ever seen. Trump for so long is proving how he is the real man to lead this nation. I do not know what else they need. These anti-Trump attacks need to end. I and many other people agree with Leno because he is right. President Trump and his family deserve respect more than any.